Hello, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be trying to show you how to take your watch photography from looking like this, some boring wrist shots, to something like this, a bit more creative and a bit more interesting. Now, all you're going to need is the most basic of equipment. There'll be no need for DSLRs or any fancy equipment here. All you'll need is your iPhone, or any phone for that matter. So I'm going to hopefully make this video simple to follow and interesting. So stay all the way to the end if you want to get all the tips and the useful information out of this video. But now, let's jump into it. So this is where I take a lot of my indoor photos. I have a black background here, which is used to just darken the atmosphere behind the watch. Got some foreground textures, got a wood here and different wood there. I've also got a piece of paper taped over here. I'll get to that in a second. But I appreciate a lot of people don't have just a black piece of card. So I'm going to be using this for some of the photos today. A black folder, because I'm pretty sure most people can get their hands on one of these. Something else I'm going to be using, just a piece of cardboard to prop the watch off the ground. Um, quite simple really, doesn't have to be anything special. And I'm also going to have a bit of black foam. Now this doesn't actually have to be black, it doesn't even have to be foam. It's just something that's going to be flat to put on top of the cardboard. Um, what else am I going to be using? A watch. So this is a Casio G-Shock. I'm going to be using an analog watch and a digital watch. I think most people are going to have a digital watch, so that's what I'm going to start off with. But I will go on to an analog watch as well. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. I probably imagine it's going to be either a Mido or my San Martin. What am I going to be taking the photos with? Well, it's my phone, my iPhone 12. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to be using. And what I'm going to be using to hold the phone up, just this really cheap tripod. So you just slide this open and clamp the phone in that way. Really flimsy legs, but I'm going to try and make it work. So let's try and make a bit of a scene here. Just a basic scene to start off with, and then we'll add stuff on as we go along. So first off, what I'm going to do is try and prop up the background. There we go. That's the background propped up right in the middle. I'm then going to try and get a stand roughly set up. So I'm just going to put this over the top. Uh, it's probably a bit high, actually. So I'm going to be like that for now. And I want it about there because I want a blurry background. Also, don't have a lot of lot of foreground. Um, you can't even see what I'm pointing at. There we go. Yeah, I don't have a lot of play here for the camera, so I may put it there. Um, I might have to push that back after. Another thing that all photographers will use, I promise you, is Blue Tack. Blue Tack is an absolute savior. Blue Tack is just amazing because it's a, a good way to hold things into position when they don't want to be. So let me get the camera and try and get the watch set up. So I'm going to do a nice, simple, just on the side photo first with a black background. Another thing that's not necessary, but I do have, it's one of these. It's a puffer tool. These are really nice just to have, just to get rid of any dust. I'll be using that today just to puff away any dust that might be on the watch. Oh, you know what? I want the watch higher. I want the watch higher. So let me move this out of the way and get the watch higher. That's not looking too bad. I have not zoomed in at all. And the reason that is, is every time you zoom in on one of these camera lenses, you're going to be losing actual resolution and I don't like that I don't want my images to be blurry always focus on the actual unless you want to try and do something special but focus on the name of the watch brand so Casio up there that's what people will look for first this photo not looking too bad a bit boring but nothing too bad there I want to try and get a higher tilt but then you can see the buttons so what I'm going to do is invert this So you can't see the buttons, but then it's trying to open on me a bit. So I'm going to flip it around again. There we go. Get that other bit of blue tack off. We have a nice looking background. Tilt the watch slightly. Focus on the Casio and there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. That looks like a good bit of framing. Let me try and tilt the light slightly. You can see it changing there ever so slightly. I think that looks good just there. What I'm going to try and do now is um, just add a little bit of water into the shot. I'm going to use one of these. These are just really cheap um, 
just water sprayers. So I'm going to spray a bit of water onto the watch. Maybe a bit on the background, just to give it a bit of character, this photo. So what I've done here is use too much water, so you can't see it. So I use the air tool, push away some of the water droplets. Looking pretty decent. That's not bad. But let's try a different watch and uh, see what we can do. So for the next watch, it's going to be the San Martin. So I want to try and have a different background. So here's the San Martin. Very attractive looking watch. Very beautiful. So instead of the black, I'm going to just put a white piece of paper. But this is actually out of a folder. Great way to have multicolored backgrounds on the cheap is to buy just buy um, dividers on a folder. You get loads of different ver variants and um, yeah, it's very inexpensive. But you can see me try and set up this shot here and the watch keeps falling down. So this is where I can use a bit of Lutac to try and support the watch. Now I can just try and angle it the way I want it. It's not too bad. I have to reposition the camera slightly. Okay, not bad. Let's take a photo. And another thing I forgot to mention is that on your camera app, you can click this button here and adjust the exposure and the other settings like a timer. So I'm going to put a three second timer on. This is because I can then touch it, walk away, and then it will be no vibration. So there'll be less blur in the image if there was me to shaking the camera slightly. Now I'm going to lower the exposure ever so slightly because I think it's a bit overexposed here. So just minus one. Here we go. Perfect. Let me just focus back. I don't think that was fully focused on the San Martin bit. Good. Um, I'm going to try and reposition the watch ever so slightly. I really want that burst of light coming from the hands. The hands on this watch are a treat to look at. Okay, just playing around with the exposure a little. Let's try and take that photo. You can really get that blue off the San Martin's AR coating. It's so blue, so I think it's a bit overpowering, actually. Let me try and get it so that the watch has got the lighting up of the hands, but it's not so blue. This is a half of the hobby, really, is just playing around with the positions, trying to get that perfect angle. Now, I've just noticed here, I can use my hand to block some of the light to try and get a better photo. Now, I know I'm going to be cutting you off from the what I'm doing for a few seconds, but I think this would actually make for a better image. So, But I want to try and make the image a bit more entertaining. I don't want it just to be a boring background, so I'm going to put in a shot glass just to spice up the background a bit. Now, I'm trying to remember actually where the cardboard is. It's kind of hard to remember because I can't see it with the paper on top, so just sort of guessing right now. Like I said, it's just trial and error. So what I'm going to do now is actually I've got a couple of these. These are fake ice cubes. They look pretty good and I'm going to use them just to put in the foreground because I don't want there to be too much going on but at the same time I don't want it to be so bland. So I'm going to put it there so it's a bit blurry. It doesn't take your eyes off it and I'm also going to put one in the background. Something like that. Now, let's try again and take another photo, but I'm going to reposition my hand once again to block some of the light. So I'm going to put, I think about there was good. It's hard to get it exactly right. I think that would actually look pretty good. Not bad at all. Now, if I wanted to switch out these shot glasses for something else, or maybe even invert them, so you get a different texture in the background. But you can mix it up. Maybe I want something else like this. I mean, a seashell, who knows? Now this is a bit precarious because I'm not actually sure where. Okay, that's only just staying up. But yeah, that could be a pretty decent image now. That's not looking bad, is it? Um, I could try and add some color. I don't know, something simple like a straw going across 
giving that seasidey vibes. You have the, the shell, the ice, the straw. It could be on a holiday or something. You're almost telling a story with these photos. Great. Now, if you're having an analog watch, taking the photos of those, I'd always recommend either doing it at 10 past 10 or 10 to 2, because that is the time that most people prefer to take photos of watches, because it has the highest visibility. So you can see the dial better, or you can see what the brand is, the specifications that are normally at the bottom, and it just allows you to have a better image of what is going on. Now, the second hand is normally just past the six o'clock that's normally where it is, trying to not block the text. So if there is text there, which this has, it'd be a bit further along or a bit before. But that's just a minor detail. I personally don't really like doing that too much because I feel like it just makes it a bit too, um, I don't know what the word is, too set up, I guess. A lot of my photos, I prefer them to be in the moment and real. That's why I have the bezels turned and stuff, because you can see I'm actually using the watch. That's what I prefer, to be honest. But it's all personal preference after all. So now I'm going to get a different watch out and we'll do one last photo shoot. So for the last watch of the video, it's going to be the Casio Marlin. A actually beautiful watch. And um, yeah, I'm going to rotate the bezel actually. Show that it's been in use. Um, just a little bit. There we go. And we're going to be doing a bit of a mix up here. So instead of having a just a white background or white foreground or a black background, I'm going to be doing a bit of a crazy mix so i want to try and play off the color scheme of the watch this is another thing that a lot of people do me myself included me myself and i um is the gold color scheme around the bezel for instance and the black i'm gonna play off that so i'm gonna have a black background with a gold foreground but i don't want it to be just straight up blocks of gold so um yeah i'm gonna use this this is actually an old potato sack so um I'm going to drape this over our stand just a couple of times so there's no black coming through. Maybe actually just want to be enough. I don't want there to be too many frayed edges poking up onto our background. And um, then I'm going to try and play around with how it looks. So let's put the watch at the front here. Get the camera in position. Now, let me just tell you right now that if you have a professional camera, just buy a good tripod to start off with because... It's one of those things that there's really no point in cheaping out on because you're only going to need to buy another one. This tripod that I'm using now is hell to use, this little one on the camera, but it's only for this video, so I don't really mind. But you want variable tilt and adjust. You want to be able to pan your camera wherever and you want to vary the height without having to actually change the leg size and how far apart they're spread. But this is a bit of budget, so. Um, it is what it is, really. I like that. That's not bad. It's a bit boring, though, and I can see the edge of this too much. So I'm going to try and move it a bit closer. Now, a lot of this you don't have to worry about, as long as the center is actually captured, okay? Because when you're actually uploading the image to whatever, you can crop it slightly, if you so desire. It's not the be-all and end-all if there's a bit of a background showing that you don't want to see. Or you could, in some very annoying circumstances, zoom in slightly like that. But then my watch looks too big, so I have to move it back slightly. And I've got so much room here now on the foreground, so I'm going to have to do something with that. Tilt the watch again. There we go. So about there. That's looking pretty good. Let's try and put some more things. Now, I want something in the foreground. Let's try and put something like this. So I've got this off a bag I own and it's just a strap it's just a normal strap really but I like this sort of bronzy brass weathered look that it had so maybe I could use that in the foreground to create like a bit of a um, gold contrast maybe I can try and prop this up not looking bad there not looking bad at all now I want something over here opposite and in the background also goldish um, yeah, this is quite random, I have to admit. There's a load of rope. So I'm going to try and put this over here, maybe. Yeah, that does not work at all. It looks terrible. Um, that's not bad. Maybe I want this over a bit further. 
now it's draping down again. So what I'm going to use now is a bit of blue tack, scrunch it up into a little ball, and try and tilt it and hold it so that the camera can't see this blue tack behind it. But we know this blue tack and it's doing its job well. Tilt the watch again. That's looking pretty good, but I've got too much dead space right here. That's annoying. So I'm going to try and push this a bit like this. That's looking pretty decent, you know? Not bad, but I still feel like there could be something there. I don't want to overcrowd it, but at the same time, I don't want it to be a two-dimensional image. Now, with using your camera like this, your phone camera, and you want to try and pan it slightly or tilt it, I do that in after, like editing, because it's not really possible to do like this. Um, maybe, uh, maybe, but I might... I don't know, it's not very stable, I don't really want to risk my phone. This is looking better, I have to admit, from this angle. But I'd normally do this in post with my phone camera. Try and refocus it. How's that looking? That's not looking terrible, I have to admit, it's not looking bad. I don't really want to zoom in because you lose that resolution. That's not bad at all, I have to say. Let's try and move this slightly. That's good. I like this because the tip of the um, clasp on this buckle is actually almost pointing towards where the bezel is. I kind of like this. It's for photo. So I'm going to focus on the Casio, click go, and move out of the way. So I don't draw a shadow. There we go. That looks pretty decent. I don't, I mean, it's not razor sharp. I don't know why it keeps focus shifting. Oh gosh, almost knocked over the light. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah, there's definitely some improvements to be made. I can play around with the background forever. It doesn't have to be black. It could be white, whatever, any color you want. You can blend colors by doing them at different distances. But to be honest, for as an introduction into watch photography, I think this, any day of the week, beats just looking down on your wrist and taking a photo. I'm not against doing wrist shots, but when it's every single photo, it gets boring. Spicing it up like this is just an interesting way to enjoy the hobby. I hope I've inspired you and shown you that it is possible to do this. I thank you ever so much for watching. I'm going to be doing a video shortly on actually super macro on watches, how to do photography on super macro levels, two to one ratio. I think that'd be a great video. Stay tuned if you want to watch that. Thank you ever so much for watching. Goodbye.